In Mark 1 3, it says, John the Baptist was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. He was a voice. He was a voice. It was John's voice, but it was the Holy Spirit that was speaking through John. Do you, do, can we recognize the difference? You can recognize it sometimes, can't you? There's a distinction made. And you say, this is no longer the preacher preaching. This is no longer the teacher teaching. Right, right. Someone is speaking through them. Someone is teaching through them. A voice. The Holy Ghost and John became so entwined that their voice became one. Imagine that. The Holy Ghost and John became so entwined that their voice became one. How about us? Is our voice entwined with the voice of the Holy Spirit. Is that what people are hearing from us? Are they hearing our voice? Or are they hearing the voice of the Spirit coming through us? Several years back, at that time we were filling in at a church in Arkansas. And I made a trip back to Western Pennsylvania, that's originally where Fame and I are from, to visit family. And one of the family members asked me a question, you know. And so I answered their question, and another question came up, and I answered their question. And before I knew it, the whole family room was filled with my aunts, my cousins, it's filled with them. So I went on for about another 30 minutes or so. And what did I do? I gave an altar call. Great job. <laughs> do it at your next family reunion. <laughs> I gave an altar call. Twenty-four members of my family came to the Lord that night. Praise God. They got saved. Thank you, Jesus. What you're hearing is Tony's voice. But if you listen a little deeper, You'll hear the voice of the Spirit. Amen. That's why the Lord does not want us to give our voice to nonsensical talking. And, you know what I'm saying? You say, well, why? Why? You know, gibberish and chattering and chattering and so forth and so on. Why doesn't the Lord want us to use our voice in that manner? It's because of the voice of the Holy Spirit that resides in every spirit-filled believer. Amen. You have a voice. Amen. You have a voice. I like this scripture here. It just simply says, the word of the Lord bypassed Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, Herod, and the Tetrarchs 
Tut trucks, tut trucks. Anybody know how to say that word? Annas and Capus. So the word of the Lord bypassed all these guys and came to John. Where? In the wilderness. Are you in a wilderness this morning? Your spiritual experience. That's a good place. As hard as that is. I was in the wilderness when I was bound with PTSD. As hard as that was, I gained something out of that experience. One thing I gained was a voice. Because I was actually pastoring a church at the same time that I was going through PTSD. Oh, that I preached my heart out. Man, I preached my heart out. What I preached was mostly for me. You get it? Yeah. What I preached was mostly for me. Everybody else was just kind of a bystander. But not really. They picked up the message. They began to develop a voice. A voice. We have a God-given voice. The Bible says that John cried. He cried. I don't know what you'd call it. One Sunday I'm laughing, the next Sunday I'm crying. I don't know if I'm bipolar or what. <laughs> but anyhow, that's the way I am. That song tears me up. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so good. Yeah. Let him do likewise. 
And when I first read that, I thought to myself, why did John tell them to give something away? Then I remembered that John preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. True repentance is always followed by radical change in one's life. A friend of mine that I grew up with, and we're still, and you know, he's still like my best friend today. We grew up with, and I was going into this uh, store, uh, they had a counter, and I was going there to buy a pack of cigarettes. And I went in there, and here's my friend, David Paulovich, and his brother-in-law, Stu Hayes. I heard that David had gotten saved, but I didn't believe it. He was just that kind of a guy. In all, in all of my wild imagination, would I think that David Paulovich would get saved, but he got saved. And I sat down with them that night, and him and his brother-in-law said, how about coming to church tomorrow? Well, Dana and I went to church. I'm sitting in the car, I'm smoking like a chimney snack. Because actually I had made a decision to. Before I went to the altar that night, I had made a decision. Rip them cigarettes off. And that was the last time I ever smoked. Listen, I smoked four packs a day. I was a chain smoker. I picked up that habit and not. We got into the church. They started singing the third song. I didn't wait for the altar call. I got up from the uh, bench pew, and uh, I started walking down the aisle on my way to the altar. Well, anyhow, I felt her hand in mine. And she said to me, she said, Tony, you're not going anywhere without me. And it's been that way now for like 48 years or so. Praise God. You're blessed when you have a good wife. Amen. You're blessed when you have a good husband. And it might be the biggest blessing to have neither. <laughs> so, true repentance is always followed by radical changes in one's life. Yeah, when I went home that night, I got rid of my boots. We made a life change, Dana and I. Praise God. You know what it was about to, our, our son had just been born. And we wanted to raise him up in a Christian family. But you know, you can't raise a kid up in a Christian family if you're not a Christian. Yes. You gotta be a Christian to raise your kids up in a Christian family. Oh, we've seen so much over the years and so many things, and I could go on and on and on and on. I probably could actually share all afternoon into the night services. <laughs> well, I guess a lot of it will be vain jam.
Lord, this, this meeting is yours. Take it over, Lord. Lord, if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, draw them, I pray, by your precious Holy Spirit. Draw them, Lord. If there's anybody here that is afflicted, that is in need of healing, Lord, I pray that you would touch, that you would heal. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.